Welcome back to Blue Rose. I am walking down the street when I see something unpleasant unfold ahead of me. You, I'm surprised you see you're still here. Simon and Gavin, judging by the look on Simon's face, this isn't going to turn out well. The air is heavy with animosity. Mm. Like to say the same, I'm surprised the Templars have so much free time these days that they can laze around in the mountains like this. How dare you! Gavin notices me approaching them and calls out for me. Aileen, I put a leash on your dog. This is obviously the last straw. Simon steps forward. This is it. You leave now or I'll make sure you do. You think I'll just turn a blind eye on the presence of a Hellenian, Hel Hellenian soldier? I don't care if you go blind. I'm not going anywhere. Simon grabs the hand of his sword and the situation escalates. I have to do something. Stop. A clear voice interrupts them before he can draw his sword. I'm surprised to see the delicate figure of a young girl standing in front of Gavin, arms spread out to block the way. It's Aaron. What are you doing? You can't fight here. Move out of the way. Are you aware of who you are protecting? I don't care. You can't decide who is allowed here or not. Aaron stands firm as he confronts Simon with that blinking. Before long, he, also, he and I also notice the oppressive stares at the towns by people Nearby, who heard Aaron shouting, Simon gives in and pushes his sword back in place. Uh, fine, I will follow your rules as long as I am here. I can tell he is still burning with anger as he shoots Gavin a glare and then turns around to leave. I watch him restlessly as he walks away, wondering if I should follow or not. As he disappears out of sight, Aaron finally lowers her arms and Gavin heaves a deep sigh from behind her. Seriously, that guy has more trouble than he's worth. So, so, you, so says you. I'm sure you provoked him again, didn't you? What, you only trust me that much? Please don't hide against him. He's not a bad person, really. They both look at me. Aaron relaxes and smiles. Don't worry, it must be tough for him, too. Oh, you think so? What about saying thank you? I just saved your neck. I could have taken care of myself. The tension in the air lifts and spec spectators slowly return to the chores. I watch Aaron and Gavin bickering. Gavin, after staying here for a while, I just end up accepting his presence in spite of what he turned out to be. Of course, it won't be that easy for Simon. Oh, this is troubling. As I leave the two of them behind, the figure of a man catches my eye in the distance. I see him standing between the houses further down the street, past a group of people chatting. It's him, the man I met by the lake. It's the first time I've seen him since then. He definitely stands out. I'm on the ordinary villages here. Man, every time I read, for some reason, it blocks at my nose. And I have to sniffle. I don't know why. It's so annoying. Oh, it's... Another Aaron? Surprised, I noticed that Mary is standing next to me, smiling her usual friendly smile as she follows my gaze. Aaron? Yes, the spirit of the mountain. What a pleasant surprise to see him here today. He's a spirit? She nods. Yes, you can tell, can't you? There's something different about him. After all, he was here long before the first of us arrived, and he's been a very kind host. So his name is Aaron. I guess he turns to the stranger, but I can't help but get surprised as he also turns his head, looking directly back at me. Despite the long distance, his stare makes me slightly uncomfortable as if he can hear our every word. Instinctively, I quickly look away while at the same time admonishing myself with my paranoid thoughts. It's the first time I ever met a spirit though. I couldn't help but be a little curious. Um, why even have me choose the forest if there's only one place to choose? Do you take home my lot of prey every day then? Having nothing better to decide uh, to do, I decided to follow Tobias into the forest again today. He doesn't complain anymore since the first time I asked I could come on if I could come on, he just shrugs and continues all words, leaving it up to me whether I want to follow or not. No, I usually I only have for myself if I need them or when the sisters ask me to help them stock up. Once in a while someone asks some time will ask me for favors too. Let's see. You spend so much time out here. I always thought you were hunting for everyone there. 
Of course not. There are other sounds people keep doing this. Besides, you shouldn't go off killing all the animals here unless you really need it. You make it sound like I intend to. It wouldn't surprise me. There he goes again. I grit my teeth, but hold myself back from starting a new argument. We continue in silence for a while, then he raised his hand, signaling for me to stop. Certainly, Toby is kneels down, examining the tracks on the ground. I notice a near a tree nearby with its bark all scratched and torn. Boars. I step forward to take a closer look at the tree, but Toby has stopped me again. Stop. What? Don't go over there. He glares at me if it's the most obvious thing in the world. Is it me? Or is he even more annoying today than usual? I sigh in exasperation and walk closer to the tree anyway to take a closer look. There is no boar over here. Wait. I feel the ground give in beneath my foot as I step down. Crap. I flail my arms and step to gain my balance, but it's no use. Finding only more broken twigs and foliage, it all gives in under my weight, and I finally slide in down a grassy slope. When I finally come to a stop, I have twigs in my hand dirt all over my uniform. That's just great. I once had the pain in my old wounds. I told you to stay. I hear Toby's complain about above me, and I curse myself for managing to look seduce that to look stupid in front of him again. Yeah, yeah. I'm about to push myself back up when I hear Tobias gasp above me, and when I see it too, something's watching me from the bushes ahead. A boar? <laughs> it's huge! The small black eyes are fixed on me, and I can see its sharp tusks that are likely responsible for the marks on the tree above. The boar snorts aggressively and stomps on the ground with one hoof. Get out of here, there. Easy for you to say. My wounds are all hard from the stupid fall, so flee back up the slope before it can reach me is out of question. The boar stomps again, as if daring me, or just trying me. It kicks off the ground, charging towards me with full force, watching it closely as it approaches. I grip the handle of my sword firmly while focusing my energy. The air tensions around me as I concentrate on the animal rushing forward. Wait for it. No! This is why something, this is when something comes flying down in front of me. It's Tobias. <laughs> Whoa. He lands between the boar and me and reaches for the sword by his side in a desperate attempt at warding off the rampant animal. Hey, I look pretty good in that uniform. I stare back at his astound astounded by the stubborn turn of events. That fool, what does he think he's doing? He'll just get himself killed by doing something so reckless. And true enough, before he can fully unsheath his blade, his this weak attempt at rescue promptly fails as the boar hits home, knocking the sword out of his hand and sending him, sending him flying off to the right. The boar continues unhindered towards me at the game head this obstacle. Quickly, I draw my sword and then plunge it into the ground right before the animal reaches me. The energy concentrated in the blade is set loose. The boar whines in surprise as the electric fire wave hits home. Shocked by this unexpected pain, puts its pain it puts in the brakes and runs in a different direction. Still squealing as it disappears into the forest. I push myself up and hurry over to Toby's side. He's sitting up by holding his arm while wincing in pain. What did you do that for? I yell at him as I try to take a closer look at his wounds. What was I doing? Those things are dangerous. I tried to help you. I didn't need your help. That was really reckless. Whatever. Looks like you got lucky enough and nothing seems to be broken. His arm is bleeding and it's probably going to be sore for quite a while, but nothing serious. A sign of relief. We need to make a bandage for that. I could take care of it. He cuts me off and slowly gets back on his feet. But then, while trying to his best to camouflage the pain in doing so, he humps over and picks up his boat and starts before heading in the direction of home. I got. I get back up to in order to follow him back, but he stopped me, not once looking me in the eyes. No, I'll be fine. With that, he slowly moves away. Alright then. I guess the one thing that was hurt the most in this incident was his pride. How stubborn. Oh well, maybe I should go ask Mary if she could do something for that cut of his. Nice spell check. I say this to myself after Toby disappears out of sight and then decide to head back to town.
Hmm. Let's go to the lake. Hmm. <laughs> Aaron hums as she trots along the edge of the lake with a small cl collection of flowers in her arms. Her song wakes me from my meditation as she slowly comes closer, picking flowers. Lena, I didn't know you were up here. I get it from the seat beneath a large tree and wipe off the grass. Well, I like it up here. It's peaceful and perfect for my training. Training, huh? You only take things seriously. It's all part of the job. I guess it is. But yes, it's a lovely place, isn't it? I love coming up here. She makes a spin on herself with closed eyes and a smile. These flowers are for the end. Mesa Johansson asked me to bring some for her, too. Oh, she's the lady running the bakery. She'll give us some bread in return. Sounds like it all works out nicely. It does. Although I admit having more actual customers would help. She scratches her cheek with an embarrassed laugh. Running in an inn in a small village with no one passing through must truly be a challenging job. Still, Emma looks very happy in her current position. Stop sniffling. God, I wish my nose would stop being clogged up. Mind if I join you? Or on your walk, I mean? Please do. I don't mind the company. The only ones I ever run into up here are Aaron or Tobias. Or they're both what you probably know by now. I walk beside Aaron as she continues her stroll along the lake, picking out the best of the wildflowers in the area. It's a nice, relaxed moment. Day seven. Hmm. Actually, guys, I'm going to end the video here. Thanks for watching. I don't have a really long outro, so see you guys next time.